skin, Big Bandish. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to the Acne Channel. Callie here, otherwise known as My Face Story, for those of you who do not know who I am. And today I wanted to talk about hyperpigmentation, otherwise known as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, PIH. Hyperpigmentation and acne go hand in hand. If you have acne, most likely you probably have some form of hyperpigmentation. But I wanna talk about what hyperpigmentation is, how it differs from a scar, and then some of my top treatments, things that I like to use to treat my hyperpigmentation. So let's get started. First of all, hyperpigmentation is the red mark that's left over after your acne. This mark, it should be flat to the surface. It won't be indented or raised or anything like that. It'll just be a flat red, sometimes brown mark. And that mark will last anywhere from a month up to, this is facts, up to 24 months. Yes, hyperpigmentation can last a long time. So if you feel like this spot has lasted a year, it actually maybe probably has. <laughs> so hyperpigmentation differs from scarring in that hyperpigmentation is flat on the skin. It is not an injury to the skin. It has not created any damage and it shouldn't be indented. A scar, on the other hand, is indented. It's permanent damage to the collagen fibers and the way your skin tried to heal itself and restructure itself after that breakout. So a lot of people will be like, oh, my scarring's so bad, and they actually only really have hyperpigmentation, and that will go away with time. Scarring is quote unquote permanent, but there are things that you can do about it. For example, like banish. Hyperpigmentation, red spots can go away with time. Um, and I'll tell you the products that you can use to make them go away. Scarring, a bit more permanent, will either be indented or raised and is like, a, like damage to the actual skin. So they are different. So yeah, that is the difference between hyperpigmentation and scarring. Hopefully I explained that well enough. So let's get into how to treat hyperpigmentation. The first way that you can treat hyperpigmentation is actually to just wait, which seems counterintuitive because you want to put creams and lotions and potions on and have it fade really fast. But sometimes hyperpigmentation just fades on its own. So sometimes you don't need to do anything at all and it'll just go away. For those of you that do want to do something or have very stubborn hyperpigmentation that doesn't just go away, Way. These next tips are for you. The best place that you could start, in my my opinion, is by using AHAs. And AHAs are alpha hydroxy acids. One of the most popular AHAs is glycolic acid. And this is a really good starting point um, for a lot of people. AHAs basically speed up skin cell turnover, so they help to get rid of that hyperpigmentation faster. One of my favorite products that has glycolic acid in it is the Pumpkin Enzyme Mask. So that is why that helps with hyperpigmentation so much, discount code Cali. But that will help to improve the look of PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, all that jazz. I mean, you can really find AHAs in a lot of stuff. Salicylic acid is another one. Actually, I think salicylic acid is a BHA. But any exfoliating acid really is going to help to speed up skin cell turnover, help to shed the old skin cells that are on top with hyperpigmentation and reveal new, healthy, bright, clear skin underneath. Three other really popular hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation fighting ingredients are vitamin A, vitamin C, and niacinamide. I'm not gonna go too much into those because there are separate videos on all of those, which we can link down below. But yes, all of those are also really great ingredients. The next ingredient I want to talk about is hydroquinone. This is an ingredient I have seen everywhere. And a lot of people really like this ingredient. For me personally, it is um, a little bit too harsh for my skin. A lot of people do really like hydroquinone. Hydroquinone basically blocks the enzyme that's responsible for melanin production, which lightens the skin. It is a skin lightener. You will see this kind of actually in some Korean skincare beauty products I've noticed and other products like that. But one of the hydroquinone products that I know a lot of people really love is like the Rapid Spot Lightener from Murad. I've used that before, did like it. Again, my skin is kind of sensitive to hydroquinone. Because it is a skin lightener, it should only be applied to the affected areas unless you want your whole, like the whole skin tone will get lighter. So if you had like, you know, two spots, you just put it on there, not your whole face. Does that make sense? Because it'll lighten the spots. Like you put on your whole face, lighten your whole face. So if you don't want that, 
don't do that. Okay, the next product that people commonly use to treat hyperpigmentation is retinoids. And Defren, Retin-A, Defren, Adapalene Gel, those are things that are usually prescribed by a dermatologist. Basically, the way retinoids work to treat hyperpigmentation is that they help to treat the acne first, therefore lessening the hyperpigmentation and getting rid of the cause of the hyperpigmentation. Like acne is the cause and hyperpigmentation is the result. So eventually, if you stop getting acne, you'll stop getting hyperpigmentation, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. Yes, okay. Topical retinoids are usually prescribed to people to help with their acne, and it helps with acne by speeding up the skin cell turnover rate. It also shrinks the pores. It's good for anti-aging, all that jazz. And then because you're not getting acne anymore, rapid exfoliation will also help with PIH. So some retinoid creams, again, are Retin-A, Retin-A Micro, and Tazerac. All of those are available by prescription only except for the Differin, which is an Adapalene gel. That one you can get over the counter. I've heard of a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people loving that. I've actually never tried it just because Retin-A's for me personally, again, are very irritating to my skin. But a lot of people love it, so that's why I'm talking about it because these are generally what work for the masses. Sorry, I'm not in the, I'm not in the masses. <laughs> my skin is a finicky little business. Lastly, if you have a very persistent case of PIH, you can use at-home microneedling derma rolling, like the Banisher, of course. And then you can also do an office dermapen is something that you might want to try, or you could do the chemical peels, or anything that is like with a skin clinic or in an esthetician's office that might help you more if you have a more severe case again of PIH. And then some of the other like, I guess side tips that I can give are to wear SPF every day because SPF actually will help with the melanin in your skin and it'll help to block obviously the sun's rays so it'll help it from getting worse. I feel like since I started wearing SPF, my hyperpigmentation went from like insane, crazy red lasting months and months and months to one little red dot that lasts a week. And that's wearing SPF every single day. I make, I make a point to do it because I feel like it really does work. I know it seems like such a silly minuscule step, but it is important, especially like when we get older too. So another thing that I found that works, obviously I'm gonna say it, I'm, I shouldn't say it, but I'm gonna say it. Drinking a lot of water, drinking celery juice, that will help as well with hyperpigmentation. So it definitely does not have to be, but before you start treating hyperpigmentation, you do, this is after your acne is in control. So after you've kind of got a hold on things, this is not you know how to treat an acne video, this is how to treat hyperpigmentation options for hyperpigmentation video because acne causes hyperpigmentation. So if you don't have your acne under control, you're going to continuously develop hyperpigmentation. And it's just gonna be a really, really frustrating struggle. So I feel like it's best to just focus, you know, one thing at a time, focus on one thing at a time um, so that you don't get like overwhelmed and feel like, oh my gosh, I have to treat this, now I have to treat this, now I have to treat this. Cause I used to do that and it was real, real bad. So yeah, you know, just focus on one thing at a time, take it slow, and then always with any product, introduce one at a time and monitor your skin, make sure that you don't have any irritation or anything like that. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz to the Acne channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.